you say Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath, you also have to say Deep Purple. That that, that come as a as a threesome. <laughs> there you go. Say Rush. That's a, a great band who uh, uh, took rock to a different different level altogether in, in songwriting and technical proficiency. And uh, yeah, they're like, uh, I believe that they deserve to be in the, the, the Hall of Fame. Writing. Say Jethro Tull. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I love UFO. I know who's yeah. UFO too, and a band like that, you know, should be recognized. Yeah. And a band like that, you know, should be recognized, and hopefully someday will be. Awesome. Thank you. Throw it behind you right there. We'll go right to left. Rebecca Davis from Nylon. Uh, how do you stay relevant after more than 25 years playing music? Hello. Uh, when all else right. fails, call Rick Rubin, right? Uh, <laughs> Write a good record helps. <laughs> oh, making music that that uh, that connects with people certainly helps. And playing the songs live, <clears throat> you know, not uh, not just putting it out and not having it part of your live set. You know, we're 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 road dogs. We we've, we've played live. You know, live is our thing. We've we've gone on the road. You know from the beginning and pounded and pounded A, B, and C markets to, to, to get a huge following. You know, it came from our mm -hmm. underground tape trading following, you know? And so going out there, bringing it to the people, bringing new songs into the set, making the audience a part of the song is a big, is a big deal for us. So the more they have to do with the song, the more of an evergreen I believe it will stay. I also think that once when you when you get to a point where we've been in the last three years where you actually like get along, you really enjoy being together, writing together, playing together. Um, what happened to I think some of our records in the '90s was because of internal friction. There was a lot of compromises, and when things get compromised and, and watered down, it loses some of its singular vision. Obviously, so when you have a bunch of guys that actually really get along and share one particular vision, then I think that it, it sort of ups the ante on the relevant side also. Yeah. I, I, also I also think that it's one thing uh, is that we still care. We still care about the music, you know, on a very, very passionate level. Sir, uh, but what, if I can add to that, one thing I can say about this band um, and us is <coughs> the band has fun making music. I mean, once the guitars are strapped on and, and Lars gets behind the kick, it's like teenagers. It's hilarious to be around these guys when we're at the rehearsal room. It's like being in the garage and a teenager again. There's still that magic and that passion towards uh, hard rock and heavy metal that exists in this unit. Awesome. Jack Durr from Men's Nylon. I just want to say, Kirk, it's great to hear you again, finally. All these years. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, what new wave thrash bands you listen to? Bands like Skeleton Witch, Municipal Waste, just people who worship you. Which of those really interest you guys? I really like uh, Lamb of God. I think they're they're a great, great modern metal band. They're, uh, they're, they're just bringing it to a, a, a completely different place for me. And... Uh, we played a bunch of shows with them, and I'm just in total awe of, of, of them. I think they're great. We try to, we we have Machine Head out with us right now. Obviously, we're not particularly new, but certainly uh, riding a, a wave of resurgence. We've had, um, uh, we have the Sword out with us, and, and we've had, um, we're trying to get as many of the younger bands out there with us. We've had Trivium with us and Bullet for My Valentine and Mastodon and so on. We have Mastodon with us this summer. So there's a whole slew of, of a lot of great bands that we're trying to get out there and, and, and sort of um, just introduce to our fans and so on. I think um, one band that really excites me is the Dillinger Escape Plan. I think they're great. And, and talking about bands who have uh, proclaimed their inspiration from Metallica, you know, they're awesome, And but all the bands that we take out with us, they all inspire us to go out and, and, and do the best we can every night. It's going to be kind of a, a little black cloud. There's been sort of a lukewarm response to Death Magnetic, just a, you know, it's a good album, it's great to see you guys growing it back again and really putting on the old clothes, but it just doesn't really follow from the old albums. How do you guys respond to that? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I think it does. Have you heard it? I'll give this gentleman this guy over here. 
Hi, uh, Hank Stieber from Time Out New York. Uh, I'm just wondering if uh, the old bass players are included in this at all. Like, are they considered to be inducted as well, or is is that pretty much stopped, like with the MTV icon thing? No, Cliff. I'm, I didn't hear most of that. I, I'm, the I'm just wondering. The question if is, will both bass players? Will, will I mean, are, is is every member of the, who's been in Metallica part of the induction? Absolutely. Whoever's been playing on albums is mm-hmm. kind of it, I guess. You Cliff, know, from you're Cliff, the yeah, recording of your Jason. first record on. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Very cool. Yeah, absolutely. Um, All right, right over here. I'm David T. from Spinner.com. And to kind of that previous question, that question stole my thunder. I was going to ask you, what would you think Cliff would have thought about this whole thing? <laughs> what, sitting here with you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, um, I have to tell you. What do you think about that question? Cliff, <laughs> Cliff is a big Stooges fan right off the bat. Okay. So uh, that puts I think Cliff into perspective. Yeah, it's, it's, it, I hate playing what ifs. Yeah. I love being here right now. Right. I, you know, the spirit of Cliff lives in us. We take him everywhere we can, and so I want to think that he would love this. Yeah. And the I think fact that Metallica is being recognized as something to reckon with. And Cliff was a Cliff was a big believer in, you know, doing your own thing, being unique in your own way, not selling out, and and kind of and when I look at the last 25, 27 years, what I'm proudest of is the fact that we can sit here and look at you and say, we've done this our way. We've taken all these different, you know, turns and steps and all this and a few missteps here along the way, but 27, 28 years later, we're here, you guys are here, we're sharing this moment, and I know Cliff would be super proud of that, and I, I know he would champion this moment as much as anybody else. All right, two more. we got right here. Jennifer Madison, World Entertainment News <coughs> Network. I'm just wondering if, James, you mentioned that you'd like Jason to, you know, accompany you guys or be there at the induction ceremony. Have you reached out to him? Yes, yeah, so there's, <clears throat> there's been contact with him, for sure. And what was his response? Uh, I haven't heard exactly what his response was, but there's been an invite put out, no doubt. I mean, the fact that we're relevant today... We're being inducted. We've got an album that's doing really good. There's Grammy nominations, and we're being inducted to the Hall of Fame. At that point, is unbelievable, and we're in a good space. We want everyone to celebrate that fact. Everyone who's been a part of it, Jason has been a big part of that. We don't want to see the drama of 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 you know, unfortunately, a Blondie or a. a Pistols or a Van Halen. It's ridiculous. This is Metallica's moment, along with others. But let's celebrate. Let's forget the crap. Let's get on with the great. How are you planning to celebrate? Speaking of that, Uh, invite whoever wants to be a part of it. Have a party with all the people who have been there. You know, it's going to be like a big reunion for us. That'll be great. Our last one, sir. Grab that mic. On, on the topic of drama and near tragedy, would you guys ever consider touring with uh, Guns N' Roses again now that they're back out? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, uh, like James, was saying, saying, James was saying earlier, you know, we're road dogs and we love to tour, so if, if, if that opportunity ever came in the right situation, of course. We've learned to never say never because you don't know what's go- what hurdle or what great thing is going to be handed you. We actually all... Knows. All four of us really like Chinese Democracy. I think it's a great record. And um, oh, the so, record you're talking about? Oh, you know, it's a great record. I, who knows? I mean, we never say no to anything. So, um, I think the question is, will they tour with us? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, I went to the opening day of that tour. That was amazing. All right, thank you guys for being here. Uh, please thank Metallica, uh, Joel Parrishman for Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Make sure to check out the show. It's going to be on April 4th. And uh, we're going to do some photos right now. We're going to get out of the way. All right. And uh, luckily, this is Chris Kern. <laughs> And one more down here in front. Right here, Brooklyn side. Thank you. You guys, right over here.